Hallelujah. Amen. All right. So just quick, just quick now, just quick question. How many of you have gone through this series on emotional healing and all of those kind of things? Number one, you have a feedback of how you have a testimony of feedback of how it affected you personally. And number two is this, just before I teach, is um is what area are you challenged and you would love us to speak into? What area are you challenged? Oh, you know, we would love us to speak into. We've never spoken to that area. Anybody here like that? The microphone will just come to you quickly. Yeah. The emotional things have really helped you, blessed you, you know, something that's done for you. Yeah. And in what area are you challenged? Yeah. Anybody? Ah. Okay, please, someone should be the first person. Once the first person talks, then everybody start talking. So someone should be the first person. Okay, there's a there's a there's a brother here in black. Ben, it's nice to see you. Hi, it's the UK. Yeah, there's a brother here in black. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I would like to say, less, I would say, um, business. Business. So, um, when I mean business specifically, um, people don't get to talk about the loneliness in that. Loneliness in business. Okay, that's so, good. So, in terms of. So, so, so the thing is that there's actually a place to talk about business, but not in church. No, when I mean specifically, I mean the psychological aspect of it. When you're done doing it, you're successful. What happens? When you what? Done doing whatever you're doing. When you're successful in business, yes. it comes to the loneliness. It, it might come with the loneliness. Okay. Yeah, if you don't get to like mm, solve the psychological Success part. has a lot of friends, so... You know, but, but I hear you. I understand. Success has a lot of friends. Yeah, that's one area. Okay, one. Another person. Yeah, thank you for, at least for opening the door. Now that I'm going to contribute. So the two questions I ask is this. How has the teachings on emotional healing, you know, helped you? And if there's an area, I don't know if someone wants to say something, you know, if there's an area where you need to, you know, where you think about, Pastor Lord, to speak to this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, there, there are people of, on the, yeah. Thanks. It's not working. It's working now. Amen. Amen. This, I want us to talk about an area where you find yourself in a crisis and you are convinced that it is your fault. You are blaming yourself. So what is it? What, what is it? You're making a statement right now. I don't... Yeah, I want to go to... Yeah. Okay. Uh, in a situation uh, where... No, 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 no. That's what I'm asking you. What area do you need us to talk about? I never said tell us a whole story. I want to talk about loneliness in business. What is your area? Tell me. Okay. In a family where you find yourself that you are not well connected with your mom and you... So the situation is, it is your fault that you are wrong about this thing and you are feeling guilty how can you get over how do you deal with guilt okay thanks yes. yeah i hope someone is writing for me thank you yeah yes ma'am um, good afternoon pastor b good afternoon thank you for the um, emotion emotions teachings and all that um it's helped my family in terms of so in marriage right before now i used to think that when when somebody does something i just blame them i get defensive and all of that but i've learned that they're probably acting from a pattern from an experience they've had um growing up and then it's easier to trash the issue than just feel they're bad they're, um it's their fault it's their problem so i also check myself why am i why am i taking this like this what's mm. the issue i've had in the past that's making me so it's easier this time to you know just solve issues rather than just blaming the next person so yes it's been very helpful God bless exactly yourself. so so give me a particular example where it helped you particularly yeah okay so i married to a man that is from portacot and if you know how portacot people behave they're very everything is jim jim if you understand that but so that is grew... generalization well nah. most of them most of them okay. are the ones that are married to and the other ones i, 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 met. I love the fact that you said most of them uh, yeah now. so um Growing yeah. up in Lagos, there are some terms that we use. As funny as it sounds, just language, right? So, um, my husband can say something to me and I feel like he's attacking me. 
but really it's not. If you look at it deeply, it actually just wants to care about like something. Like you did Chris, you know. No, not you did Chris. No, it doesn't do that. But <laughs> so let me find something. I even um, know someone that's from Lagos that says that you know you did Chris. Yeah. Hey. No, no. That's no. why he plays his wife. But then you did Chris. You know. That's why he plays with his wife. You know. I. You know, I, I <laughs> but it's not. It's not that. Anyways, but it's just language and all of that. So now I'm like, oh, it's just from where he is. It's coming from. That's how they talk. So yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent, wonderful, wonderful. Any other person that has someone, something else? Yeah, another person? Yeah, there are two persons here on the right. Thank you. After the two, the two. Okay, there's a lady over there, that lady. Michael, just slow down. There's a lady next. Yeah. And then real life issues we have not dealt with, you know. I just want to know, yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. So I want to ask a question. How do you deal with... No, this is not the time of asking a question. No. This is not the time. Of, we'll, we'll come to question time. This, this is just time for, you know, giving us feedbacks and all of that. This is not question time. Yeah. Let's go. Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. Okay, so yesterday, a friend of mine came to my room and he said to me, I want to stop smoking. And I've tried it. You know, but it's not working. So it has become a very big issue for him. So how do you stop addictions? So exactly, how right, do we stop right, thanks, addictions? Thanks. Thank you. A lot of us must learn how to express ourselves in fewer words. You know, you know that you know sometimes and yeah, but it's not us. It's the way they taught us in school. Anyway, you know, it's not us. It's a it's a thing, and that's why most people that go for in, visa interviews have problem with visa interviews because they tell you what school did you go to? Thank you very much. When I was young, <laughs> <laughs> and. The interviewer thinks you are answering like that because you're trying to hide something. Because that's how white people are programmed. They think you're trying to hide something. Meanwhile, it's just our way of answering questions. Okay, there's someone else here. Who's the person? The, oh, the lady's in front, yeah. All right. Thank you for the opportunity, Pastor Pete. Yeah. Um, okay, I would like, first off, thank you for everything. Thank you for being a spiritual father. At NLP. Though we've not met one on one. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. So, um, I want to ask forbearance on the issue of forbearance. How do you forbear with persons on the matter of um, propaganda, for instance, uh, um, on the Nigerian Law School Lagos campus? And um, ever since we resumed after our extension, that was in, um, I think, September, or about. And um, Suddenly, my roommate started carrying this propaganda everywhere. I do not want to say in um, clear terms what propaganda is, but they started carrying the propaganda, and uh, more than half of the school keep talking about propaganda. So what, 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 what is your question? So my question is, um, with regards to forbearance and um, forgiveness, I forgot, forgetting. What is your question? How do I move from that? How am I not uh, so the person said bad things about you, right? Yes, quite a lot okay. of them. Okay. You know, if you, if you attend the services, you know I have certain principles I live by. Focus on what you can control and what's what? Yeah. Focus on what you can control and leave what you can't control. I can't control other people's opinion about myself. But I can control what I put out there that can reflect that opinion. That's what it is. Some people thought Jokas was the thief. Some people thought he was a magician. Some people thought he was a. It was. Some people said he was a prayer warrior. Some people said he was a drunkard. They had so many opinions about him, but what he can control is what himself. So I'm going to say to you, don't bother your head about what people think about you. You know, by you know, that that's the truth. It's painful that social media amplifies it, and, and that's why even when you are talking, you know, you want to be careful because. Like now, social media is very, very kind to me. Very, I'm, they are, ah, social media, very kind to me. Most of the time, they're very kind to me. Some people, when they, and then they appear on social media, is bad press. I don't, I've not really gotten a lot of bad press. But you must be that kind of person that you're not fickle. That when social media says something, change your mind about who you know. Because on social media, people talk a lot about who they have never met or seen. And come to conclusions that are not real. <laughs> I remember when the governor came here. I mean, that's the, one of the closest I've had that was not so great. So I was like, that the governor came and I got some. Please, 
but you see the governor telling him that I'm still waiting for the... <laughs> if you are close to the governor, please tell him on my behalf. Or they said I got so that ah, maybe the PA is saying that he not deliver the... Because I've not been able to get some... But the reason why is that it's just a narration that for that person to come, there must have been some financial arrangement because they think everybody's like themselves. That's what it is. That's what it is. Praise God. So that's what it is. All right. So um, so we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna do that. Let me quickly say this before I jump into my message. No matter what you do, you must learn to encourage yourself. Two things, and I'll jump into my message. No matter what you do, learn to encourage yourself. Because that's what you owe to yourself. Then the second thing is this. Don't, because of what someone else is doing, disregard what is in your hand. If you disregard what is in your hand because of what someone else is doing, what is in your hand will never grow. So I'll give an example. Maybe... Um, Maybe, I don't know, maybe who does a nice business? Maybe Akin, yeah. Akin, I give a testimony. He runs a successful company, and I'm like all over that company. Listen to me. Don't despise what you do because of what someone else is doing. That's what I'm going to. To you, what you do must always be the biggest and the best. To you, what you do must always be the biggest and the best. The reason I'm saying so is that it's that kind of confidence you have that others see in you and want to do what you do. Most people believe more in other people than they actually do believe in themselves. You know, to be honest with you, this is the best church in the world. I'm the best pastor in the world. Nobody teaches the Bible like me. That's the honest truth. Is that true? I don't know what your own truth is. I'm telling you my own truth. And I'm saying so to you because a lot of you begin to lose your self-confidence because you just don't believe enough in what you do. And you need a lot of confidence to sustain yourself in what you do. And confidence is easy when you have success to a level. But when you're at no level, it's very difficult. You know, the other day I was seeing Vicky, you know, showing all of her stuff on social media. And you're so confident. I just used to think that when she was really broke and when she was struggling, how she was trying to do that. But the thing is that you need more confidence when there's no result. Than you, need more, you need more confidence when there's no result than when there's result. When there's result, result inspires confidence. Results does what? Inspire. You don't have to tell me I'm called. How can you come to a church on a Sunday morning? Four services packed. The four services is here. Several hundred thousand online, and you say, I'm not called. Who else is called? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, I don't need confidence at this level, but it was when the church was five, when it was seven, and I will wear a tie. I, I remember one time, one, someone, someone's mother said, What kind of church is that? That's not a church. I'm coming to see it. And the woman came to the service, and no matter what they did, she sat down with you. And I'm like, what is going on today? This man will not stand up for prayer, will not sit down. He just sat down all through. Praise God. So we're going to talk about, we're going to really talk about, we're going to talk about that a lot about encouragement and all of that. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Psalm 32. So today I'm going to talk about guidance and we're going to jump and keep, keep talking about that. Is there someone that's very discouraged here today? Very discouraged. Something is really going really bad, terrible. Who? She? Give her the microphone, yeah. You brought her because of that? Who is she to you? Your girlfriend? Why are you very discouraged? Sit, 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 sit. You understand? Good morning. Um, just things happening in life generally. What, what are things that are happening? Can I sit? Let me sit down with you. Hope we can get a good shot this way. Yeah. Okay. Um, the stress from work and school. Stress from work. Here. What kind of stress do you have from work? Um, 
I work as a child psychologist. Oh wow! In Turkey, so. Do you have background in psychology? Yes. Oh, that's great. And then um, managing the job and then your personal life, wanting to have kids as a person just scares me, due to the um, due to the cases I've actually handled. Wow. In the part, so. Tell us some of the cases. Can you, is, is he allowed to tell us? Um, the, you, since you're not mentioning names. Yeah, I'm not mentioning names, but yeah. yes. Um, kids that have been um, raped by their fathers. Kids that have been abused. How old school. are these kids? They are between 0 to 15 years old. So, I, And some of them are homosexual? No, like, I don't know, but like one of the cases I had was the father, um, he filed for a divorce, and then the daughter was always visiting him, of course, and he kept on doing it over and over again, and... The thought of that, I just want to be present, and I feel like I might not because. Okay, good. That's great. So, so that overwhelms you, right? So, do you have? So, you're a psychologist, right? Do you have someone that you confide in that you're a psychologist? No, but you know every ter- But you know that the rule is that every therapist is a therapist. So why don't you have one? I did in the past, but it wasn't working. So why not find another one? I haven't thought about that. Okay, so this is what she is. So she's going through the, the stress from work. is affecting her. So what should she do? Who wants, I've taught you guys for a long time here. So someone should be able to tell me from all the things I've taught what she should do. Even all of you online, you should be able to tell me what she should do. So let me get examples of who that will tell me what she should do. Yeah, where? Anybody? Yeah, give her the microphone. There's someone behind you. After being in class for such a long time, won't you graduate? <laughs> Good yeah. afternoon, Pastor B. Good, af- yeah. good afternoon, church. Okay, so good afternoon, lady. So there's one thing Pastor B taught us last week. Sorry, my voice is gone. Last week, Sunday, he said um, the fact that they're coming to you, those people, um, that's your career line. So they're coming to you because you know that these people have this problem. So there are people out there that don't have that problem because you are in that line. But um, I don't know how to begin. But there are other people, there are other um, children that are outside that line. That the reason they are coming to you is because they have that problem. There are people outside that don't have that problem. So you look at the people outside and know that it's possible. You are saying it with a lot of words. So give her back the microphone, the, the lady in front. What's your name, please? My name is Toluwalashe. Toluwalashe, it's a pleasure to meet you. And you're doing a great job. Toluwalashe. Do you remember why you got into this child psychology? Tell me. Yes, I do. What is it? Um, I was molested growing up, so I really went into this course because I needed, I wanted to help kids that didn't have the chance to talk to somebody. That was why I went into the course. So, why is it not big? Why are you running away from it? I just feel like when it's my turn, I might not be enough because, I mean, I see people try or strive to be the best version of themselves to their kids, but it doesn't work out. It doesn't work out. Are you helping people right now? Are you helping people right now? By the grace of God. Are there, are there stories of people that have helped? One or two people? Yes, sir. X and Y? That their parents have told you that thank you so much? Have you seen some parents cry to thank you for what you've done? Yes, sir. So there's a Mrs. X that have cried to thank you for what you've done? Yes, sir. There's also some Mr. Y that have like, thanked you for what you've done? Yes, sir. Why do you need to focus on the good of your job than the pain of your job? The reason why is that the law of attention. You don't go through life. You, fo- you go through what you fo- Let me say it again. You don't go through life you go through the life you focus on. You don't go through life. You go to the life you focus on. That means, if I focus on pain, I will go through pain in life. Whatever I focus on, the time is the kind of life I go through. The reason why you feel stressed this way is this. The only reason why you feel stressed is that you've chosen over the time to focus on the stress of your job. As I'm talking to you right now, my, sh- my leg hurts terribly but the reason why i'm talking to you right now is because i choose to focus on changing lives 
I can keep going, oh my leg, oh my leg, oh my but that doesn't matter right now. Tell me three stories of that of people that have received have gotten healed through what you do. You're so shy. Okay. Um, one of them was I don't work here, I work outside the country. You work outside the country, yeah. yeah. So um, I had like cases of a three year old that was molested. A three year old was molested? Yes. Wow. By a family friend. Yeah. And then um, the, the child was, I think, autistic, so there was no way she, she could actually definitely communicate. But she, just imagine an autistic child that is molested. Let me tell you something. All of you in this service, if you attend this service and you don't feel the responsibility to share with your friends or help your friends, you should stop coming. There's no point. Because you'll be whole one day. But what is the use of all of these wonderful things I teach? Because we're doing something as a church that you will never see anywhere in the world. And all of you watching online, if, there's, if you're going to watch this and not share with your friends, what is the point? The world is really hurting. You must, you must know this. The world is really hurting. One of the things that brought me to do this is because I went through damage. And even though I was a Christian for the most of my part, the damage affected me. And even though I'm older right now, in some areas of my life, I still see the damage that was done to me. And I'm saying that we need to become the light of the world. We need to become the salt of the earth and help people heal. Look at her beautiful story. She was molested and she wonders, as long as I'm here, I can help someone else. It's okay that you were, you see, it's not okay you were raped. But we can change that. But can you now be a blessing and use your misery as ministry? Oh, wow. Can you turn your misery into ministry so that someone else will not go through misery? And I'm saying so because, you know, you want to hide and see that I'm posh and this. Let me tell you something. What impresses us, what impresses us short term is what you flash. What bonds us to you is the pain we share. When I know you've been where I've been through, I will sit in your chairs and cry because I know exactly what you've been through. And nobody can tell a better story than you because you have been through it. So I want to really encourage you. All of you that come, it's, I, I thank God you come on for the fourth service, but you can't just afford to come. You know people online, you search online, just DM them. I, I can help. I can take you somewhere. I can help. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can, do that. I, can I share with me? If you can't take them somewhere, then you help them with the messages. Send them the link and say, watch this. Just in case, you, just let me tell you something. I'm not, I'm quite intelligent in case you have not noticed. Yeah. And just for you to know, statistics in Nigeria, official statistics, one out of every four girls have been raped. The math is also read in this room. So even if you don't tell me, I know. That if I count one, two, three, four, one has been raped. I'm just saying statistics in Nigeria. We are not even talking about someone not raped, but some molestation might never get up to rape. And I'm saying it because we need to be able to. There are some things government will not do that is the church that will stand up. I mean, I had, when I was in university, this is one of the, one of the first gigs that I saw. There was a guy that was my next door. The guy liked women. Guy! So when I called him, I said, what exactly is the challenge? He said, I'm the last child. My parents used to leave me with the house help. He said, the house help was always very horny. So he always got me to sleep with her. He said, I said, having sex at eight, or eight years old. He said, she was always horny. It was like an exercise. He said, so what I've known all my life is this. And you know the way modeling is? For example, look at this. Look, and I'm sitting. Why don't does a guy sit like this? It's not guyish to sit like this. It's a mental model. So if you see me sit like this, you think something is wrong. You know, so the reason why I'm saying that, once you have a model, you will act in line with your model. A mental model. And what this teaching does, and let me tell you why I keep teaching these things, because it's not one day to change you. It's a lot of you 
rewiring, 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 rewiring. But I'm only saying that we have to do this what? Together. Okay, yeah, so tell me. Back to you, Tolo Walashe. Your story is so beautiful. So how did you help this three-year-old? What happened afterwards? I also didn't know um, what happened. The mother was quite confused, so I told her to like come without the father to my office and then we spoke and then I tried to like check the girl I could see she was in pain even if she couldn't communicate she was avoiding like eye contact which is normal but um, why did they avoid eye contact I don't know that it's how they are like that's how that's those are the what's it called the signs or the traits of an autistic kid okay so then I told the mother to excuse but it's also it's also a sign of guilt and shame when people have guilt and shame, they avoid high contact. Yeah, so when people struggle with guilt and shame, just what they look at the floor when they talk. If at as any time I talk about what pertains to you that you feel ashamed about, look at your head posture. It's looking on the floor. Looking on the floor is a posture of shame. That's what the Bible says. The woman that was caught in adultery with her head bowed. Their heads are always bowed. It's a posture of shame. Continue, please. So um, I told the mother to excuse, but she was quite reluctant, obviously. And then when she left, I checked the girl. I could see that a private part was actually swollen. A private part was swollen? Yeah, swollen. This is a three-year-old girl, yeah, right? a three-year-old girl. And then I, when I tried to, like, you know, touch, like, her, she was very, very she was so scared. Like, she started to scream. Yeah. So I told the mother, we you, went you, to the hospital. You saw the signs of trauma, right? Yes. You saw trauma. So it's trauma. So, you know, because she was having a trauma trigger, that's what's happening. She was yes. having a trauma trigger. So the, the, the trauma trigger is that there's something that's happening that reminds you of something that is bad. And that's why some of you in relationship, it's not as if your boyfriend or does, girl does something, or your husband or wife does something, but it's just trauma in the past. That's something that looks like it triggers you. continue please so we went to the hospital and then um she went for some tests and then the girl couldn't communicate but when when the father came into like the hospital you could see the fear on her face she didn't want to go home so then i i could understand what was going on so i just kept quiet and then i called the man to my office i asked him i said what's been happening like have you been present he's like oh yes i spent time with my daughter i love her so much and then i asked him i said has there been any situation? He, he lied. He said no. So I spoke to the team and then they put a camera in a room up, like somewhere in the room, and he didn't know. So one of the days he tried it again and then he was actually captured. So I, I checked on the girl again, like after a couple of weeks, and she was still the same way. And then he even got bad. He was red, like he was so bad. So I took the clips and then I just took it to the police and then um, I invited him to my office and he was apprehended. Wow. wow. Tudu can't you see how much you're changing lives? You are rare. Are you tired of changing lives? Um, I changed my course, though. I started a new course, Pastor. Is that a new course? Yes. No, it's, it's okay to start a new course. But what I'm saying to you is this. Every, you need to focus on what is working. This kind of story, I'll keep a journal where I write all these kind of stories down. And I'll go back to it. And, and let me tell you something, all of you in here, if you don't share your testimony, you're not helping me. Because I all of you know my life story. Why I share this story? Do you think my family members don't see it on social media? They do. About my mom, my stepsister, my stepbrother, my step. This is, oh, oh, you know, they have most of them are alive. They do. But I choose to let my pain become a tool for your own healing. The best you can do is that when you are healing or when, when you are healed or when you are healing, use your story to encourage me and say, Pastor, this is my story. You don't have to share it publicly. You can send a message. The reason why I'm telling you to is that if she has a lot of memories of how life has changed, maybe she will not stop. Maybe one day I will stop because you're not sharing your story. Praise God. So I want to say to you, I think the biggest challenge is that you focus on how difficult it is, how painful it is. But look at that girl. If she could speak, what would she say to you? 
I can't hear. Say to the camera. Thank you. Will she say it that way or with tears in her eyes? Will she feel as if she, you're, will she feel as if you're literally, she owes you the life? This is a three-year-old child. If you didn't interfere, that girl could get pregnant, right? She could even die. She's young. What? She could die. She could die. She, was, she already had infections. She already had infections. How does your boyfriend feel about you? Give him the microphone. How do you feel about this story? Give him the microphone. Do you feel ashamed of how you feel proud of her? I feel very proud of her. What? Very proud of her. Very, very proud. Very proud of her. She's a superwoman. Like she's she just saved a girl's life. Exactly. But you don't you don't think about that, Toluan Toluan Lasha. You don't think about that, right? You think about the pain, right? Talk to me. Talk to me. You think about the pain, the burden. Yes, because like I said, I'm just worried that it might happen. I might not be enough. I might not be present. And I really want to be present in the life of my kids. No, no, no. But the question is, why are you connecting into your kids and being present to your kids? Because I want to have kids. I mean, yeah, I you, There's to. a fear you have, right? Yes. Where's the fear coming from? That it happened to you to happen to your kids? Yes, because I'm... <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the question is that, how do you deal with the fear? The first thing is that you need to acknowledge that you have the fear. Because whatever you deny, you cannot change. You know that principle? Whatever you deny, you cannot change. The second thing is that, how will it happen to your husband, to your, to your kid? Would it be your husband that would do that? Or would it be you? It doesn't have to be the husband. No, no, I'm just asking, or it to be some no. neighbor. You, you, you've done this, so you know, you know there's a cycle of people that do it, yes? So, why does the information prepare you? Why does the information frighten you? Why does the information... This is the name of fear. Fear should prepare you. Why is the fear frightening you? Why is information frightening you? Why is it not preparing you? If you feel as if you will mismarry, why does that not prepare you? Why does that frighten you? If you feel as if I may lose my money, why does that frighten you? Why does that not prepare you? Tell me. Do you see what the problem is? I think you're allowing the information to frighten you rather than prepare you. If, you, if you're going to prepare, what is it going to be like? It should be a prayer point for you. You're going to prepare. It should be something you're discussing with your husband. It should be something you're saying, how do we put safeguards around this? That's it. Praise God. Any other person I want to share? I might be able to help you right now. How do you feel right now? Give her the microphone. How do you feel right now? I feel good, Pastor. Thank you. They are doing a great job. Can I give you a hug? All right. Come on the stage. Let's give you a hug. You are a superwoman. Oh, wow. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Praise God. Any other person that wants to discuss something? I, I love fourth service. It can go any way. And I feel, I don't feel under pressure. Another person you want to discuss, maybe you're very discouraged. Maybe something is going on. Yeah. Who? And please, you know some of you love to take the microphone. Please don't do that in the fourth service. Yeah, because some of you, I know that some of you just love to have microphone. Please. This is very serious. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who else? Yes, tell me. What's going on? Good afternoon, Pat. Good afternoon. Hermes, you're not paying attention. So you think I can't see you from here? Come, stand up, come, come, stand up, come. Come and sit down in front of me. Come and sit down in front of me. So because you're sitting at the back, I can't see. Come and sit down in front of me here. Yeah. So that's where you pay good attention. Is it with that name as the star? And he's my boy. <laughs> in Bagana Church, he'll be dancing in front here, dancing recklessly. They will give him 200 for transportation. <laughs> <laughs> so is it with that thing? <laughs> yeah, because before Jesus, we are all boys and sons and daughters. There's no big boy in the house of God. Though. Uh -huh. So in our church, there's no star. All we have are Christians, sons and daughters in Christ. Yes, go ahead. 
Good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. So it's business related. I'm a hairstylist and ever since I started my business, it's been a bit difficult for me. And I've been... What's the question? Well, there's no specific question, right? How do I move? How do I... How do I believe more in myself? Because I know I'm pretty good at One answer for you. Every time you start something, you get a mentor. One of the things a mentor does for you is to inspire confidence inside you. And never outgrow a mentor. I saw Femi to write something. Dan go my mentor. I said, my goodness. Both of them are billionaire in dollars. But one is able to say, this guy is my mentor. Pastor Debo says, that the Gio, my mentor and spiritual father. I'm sorry, Bishop, Bishop Debo said, that the Gio, my mentor and spiritual father. Mentorship is a way of changing your life. Three things mentorship does for you. Number one, they inspire confidence in you. Three things mentorship. Number one, they inspire confidence. The second thing they do for you is this. They help you avoid mistakes that they made. Number three, they add speed to you because they can tell you how fast to get there. So I can tell that you don't have a mentor. And if you have a mentor, you don't have an active mentor. True or false? True. True. I can tell. I have a mentor and I have mentors. Praise God. All right. Another thing again? Another one before we go? Yeah. I want, because you've spoken before, I think someone has not spoken yet. I wanted to share something. Now, I want someone to share something that maybe I can use to help you in terms of you're going through this pain, you're discouraged about that this is really going on in your life. Yeah, another person. So please make sure that that story aligns. If it doesn't align, please don't take the microphone. Does it align what I'm saying? Can I take, the, take this lady? Okay, take the guy, then take the lady. I'll take the two of them, yeah. Yeah, make it short. Just one, yeah, make it short, yeah. Good afternoon, Sora. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Faith. Okay. So... I've been, for the past two months, uh, I've been on this job. You've been what? I've been on this job. Okay. Uh, it's uh, in real estate. So. What's was, the question? Uh, it, was, it has to do with discouragement. Okay, so, so what's discouraging you? Yeah, so the pressure on the job. The pressure of the job? So, so, so discouraging. Discouraging. Uh, at times, I don't know. I keep looking for a reason to keep pushing. Okay. Do you have a mentor in your job? No. No. So the same answer I gave her, I'll give to you. Thank you. Yeah. Same answer. Yeah, this lady with the airtime. Yeah. Last person here. Tell okay. Me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor B. Okay, so I have two questions. Yeah. Um, the first one is, what do you do when you... You're seeing your life change. You're losing friendships. You're losing relationships. You're losing your job, marriages, and all that. Like you're literally seeing your life change. What am I? You're losing your marriage. Not, not me. Like I'm talking for. No, no, because that, okay. that's a bad change. That's why I said so. <laughs> it's, it's okay to lose friends, you know. Yeah, yeah. Continue, please. Yeah. Okay, so that's the first question. What and, do you do? I okay. do not understand the question. <laughs> Sorry. Because change can, can be positive or negative. So I don't know where this change is going to. Yeah. Okay, it feels negative because... It, the challenge is that if you're not the person, I don't know how to answer you because I'm going to ask more. So that's why I don't allow people to ask questions for somebody else because you can't go and see a doctor for somebody else. Say, my, my daughter is ill. Um, my friend is sick. How is she? Is, it, is she spitting? I don't know. No, you have to ask for yourself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, like I said before, the question is... You're losing friends. You're yeah. losing relationships. You're, you lost. I, I lost my job and all that. Okay. So, you find yourself in this place. What do you do? You need to ask yourself why that's happening to you. So, why didn't that happen to you? I, I feel it's a phase of my life. No, that, that you're not answering my question. Why is that happening to you? What has changed about you? Not all those things. What has changed about you as a person? Um, g growth. Growth. Yeah. What am I growth? Mentally. How has it? What have grown like mentally? Yeah. My mindset and the way I communicate with people, like okay. basically the way I think and all that. The way that, you think has changed. Yeah. Changed to got to get to gotten to better, getting better. Yes. Okay, that's great. So how did it affect your job? 
that part is what I don't know. Okay. Because I'm still trying to understand, to understand that. It. But okay. yes. But for the part of friends, yeah. I had well, like, I can explain that clearly. Once your mindset change, your friends will change. Simple. That that's a simple thing. That's a simple thing. Okay. So the job I lost was actually before I got another one. Okay. And lately I've been hearing in my spirit that I should quit my job. Why? Like, I should quit my job and start a business, but I don't know how to. I don't know what to do. I, I'm just... Well, I think you should go through the series on how to hear God clearly before you make that decision. So, I'll leave that in the box. I'll leave that in the box. You okay. know. Next question. Yeah. I'm not able to answer because of all the things you said right now. They're not, they're not complete. Next question. Yeah, basically, that's just the two. So, let me just go again with the first one. Yeah. Okay, so... So, what's the second question? I didn't get it at all. The second question was already answered already. Which one? Um, um, I've been feeling in my spirit to like quit my recent job that I just got okay. to start a business. And yeah. I don't think, like I've been fighting myself to do that. Okay. So this morning when I was coming to church. So what's judge, the question? Okay. The second, the second one is, what do I do? What do you do? You've been getting the need to quit your job, right? Yes. So the thing is that even when God tells you to do something, you need a plan to do it. Yeah, you need a plan to do it. So if God says that, you are my wife, I just say, hey, hi. God says you are my wife. How does that sound to you? Dumb? Don't you think so? Yes or no? You yes, me. sir. Exactly. So if God says quit your job, you can quit in a dumb way. So the, if you want to quit your job, for example, if you want to quit your job, okay, Lord, what should I do next? That's the first question. Number two, if I quit my job, I, I need to give people notice. That's the second thing. Number three, you know, I'm, I need some planning. So those are some of the things you need to get to do that. I really think a lot of you should join a cell because when you join a cell, you'll find relationship where someone can mentor you. I really think so. I she said I really think so. Yeah, this, the first question is what? The first question was what I was asking about, like, you're losing friends and relationships and I think that it's good to lose relationship on purpose if because you are growing. The reason why is that fifteen children cannot play together for fifteen years. It's okay. But you must understand that oh I'm growing. The reason why is that as you grow, what you must realize is this your former friends cannot handle you again. Is it not true? They they will, you would think that they, you would think that maybe they are spiting you or they are being jealous. They are not being jealous. You've just gone out of frequency. So they cannot understand your behavior. So all of a sudden, all of you were, were entering bus from Bagada to Shomolu and from Shomolu to Akoka, Akoka to Obalende. Now you are talking about, I, I flew first class. Ah. So it's not, you would think it's them. It's not them. There's just a disequilibrium that's taking place. The same way that you're on the, you're saying, why can't they understand you? You've changed so much in taste, you've changed in preference that you're just out of range. And some of them will want to come along and they want to pull them along, but the other people will begin to fight themselves. They will even feel uncomfortable around you. That's all of you here. Have you noticed all your friends from secondary school that are doing well are all close? All the ones are not doing well. Nobody knows where they are. Think about it. Praise God. Let me read one more scripture and we'll close to this. Psalm 32 verse 7 and we'll close from here. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Has this all blessed you today? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So basically, everybody please look up here. Just basically, every time, every time you're unhappy and discouraged, ask yourself one question. What is my focus? Every time you're unhappy and discouraged is because you've chosen either consciously or unconsciously to focus on what is discouraging you. Notice it. And notice in life. And the second, someone say, Pastor B, I can't have all this problem and not be discouraged. Listen to me. There are people that have all that problem and they are still not discouraged. Do you know that man that has no arms, no legs, that was born without it? When you listen to that guy, is he discouraged? Your problem, is he up to his own? The reason why is that he said, I have no lungs, I have no legs. But my no lungs and no legs have given me a lot of prominence because of exactly where I am. That's now a gift to me. So you need to ask yourself that 
what life am I going through? Am I going through the life that I'm, I need to know that I'm going through the life I'm focusing for? I'm focusing on. Praise God. Yeah, what are you focusing on? So, the way you feel depends on the kind of focus you feel. You, the kind of focus you have, rather. So, you can focus on unhappiness. You can focus... And let me tell you what I do. Can I teach you something that's very good? I try to say every day of my life. I try to think of three things I'm grateful for. Or I'll write it down. The reason why is that I try to take my brain to stay focused on gratitude. And I try to do it every morning. I traveled recently. So this morning when I was thinking, I said, Lord, I thank you because I had the opportunity to, when I traveled, I missed my flight and the airport, I had to change my flight ticket. My flight ticket costed about, my change of my flight ticket cost about 700,000. Now I had to change my flight ticket to be on the next flight. And this morning when I was thinking, I said, Lord, I thank you for options. What is options? That some people are stuck. If that happens to them, they don't know what else to do. I said, I want to thank you. When I called my agent, he didn't even say, where is the money? He changed the ticket first. We sort ourselves back in Lagos. I said, I want to thank you that I have options. There's a way you, it, there's a way you frame your mind. You teach your mind to think on the positive. You teach your mind to think on the positive. Praise the Lord. Are you here? I, Lord, I, I thank you that I have options. I, I could have said, oh God, what is this nonsense? I missed my ticket. And that's true. Oh, I'm paid more. But Lord, I thank you that I have what? Options. Someone say, I don't have money to buy a ticket. Are you not even grateful you have a visa? And the reason why I'm saying so is that once you're focused on I don't have money to buy a ticket, what state will you be? Someone tell me. Unhappy, yes. Discouraged, yes. Sad. What else? What other word? Overwhelmed. The reason why is that you're focused on the fact that you don't have money to buy a ticket. But when you, ch- this same you, if you're not focused on the fact that, ah, thank God I have visa, how will you feel? Excited, another word. Grateful, another word. Why? But it's the same you. That you just choose to focus on one thing over what? The other thing. So the question is that, determine that, just remember this. You are not going through life. You go through what you focus on in life. Just remember that all the time. And every time you feel a certain way, ask yourself, how can I change my focus? Someone says, I'm in debt. Yeah, even lucky your debtors are not taking to EFCC. And they are not sending you all those messages you send people. She has HIV. She is this and this and this. You are lucky. Praise God. Let's read the scripture and we close. Psalm 32 verse 7. Psalm 32 verse 7. Quickly, we're going to close from this. Psalm 32 verse 7. Were you ble- have, you, have you been so blessed today? Yeah. 32 verse 7. Let's read this, please. Glory to God. All of you online, I hope you're getting blessed. So, we've been talking about, throughout this month, about how to be led of the Holy Spirit. And I want to just give you some key things here as we close. Psalm 32 verse 7. He says this. Let's read the message translation because of time. Um, the passion translation because of time. The Passion Translation, because of Psalm Psalm 32 verse 7, the Passion Translation. All right. It says, Lord, you have my secret hiding place, protecting me from these troubles. So the service is saying that this is how God protects me. He says, surrounding me with your songs of gladness, your shouts, your joyous shout of rescue, releases my breakthrough, pulse in your presence. So this is what God does. Verse 8 is now what you do. This is how God does it, rather. It says, hear the Lord saying, I will stay close to you, instructing you, and guiding you along the path for your life i will advise you along the way and lead you f- and lead you forth with my eyes as your guide so don't make it difficult don't be stubborn he said don't make it difficult don't be stubborn when i take you where you have not been before don't make me tug you or pull you along just come with me you know what i'm saying so to you all of you must realize that the way life is god wants to lead you he says this go back just go back to to the verse before go back to the verse before he says see what it says he says hear the lord saying i will stay close to you 
instructing and guiding you along the pathway for your life one of the reasons why we get into trouble is that we keep saying my age mates are doing this who is your age mates who is your age mates everybody has their pathway in life every and you must rest and say lord see i don't know what your path is but i have my pathway in life and god says you need to be original copy copy real's destiny i want to be real's destiny i want to follow the trend real's destiny he says see what he says he says i will guide you along the pathway for your life god wants to guide you but the question is this this is the question will you allow god guide you or you will make all your decision based on your senses you know what proverbs says it's a trust in the law with all your heart and lean not on your understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and it shall what direct your path question do you allow god direct your path the relationship you are in did you allow him to direct your path is it the one you saw car you fell in love is it the one you saw skin color you fell in love after you spent one night you are in love glory to god after you receive massive gifts have you not fallen in love I said, nobody has ever done this for me before. Why won't I love you? <laughs> Praise God. The same thing happens to relocation. Some say, ah, let me travel first before I know if it's the will of God or not. Do you don't know what your life is going to be like. The most important thing is to find out. The way God has structured it, some people have to travel to succeed. E.g. Joseph. Joseph traveled to explode. But some people have to stay to succeed. God told Isaac, you will not go to Egypt. Meaning that not everybody will succeed by traveling. Question, are you among that will not succeed by traveling? Or are you among those that will succeed by staying? Which one are you? I don't know. But my friends are going. I'm going. This month's teaching series, and you want to go back to the YouTube and watch first and second serve and third service. The thing we're teaching about is this. How do I know God's plan for me? How can I know when the Spirit of God is leading me? So you're saying that uh, these four people are, they, I have these four girls that I really, I really like. I don't know what to choose. It's not about four girls. Which one is God guiding you to? Because you may have four girls. God may say number five. Number five is not the current picture. You're thinking about investment. And there's a way that God is guiding you. And he's saying, this is why I'm guiding you. Should you be doing that or should you be doing this? This series is about you hearing and paying attention to what God is saying and allowing God to lead you so that you don't get into trouble. See what it says. It says, you preserve me from trouble. You hide me. How do you hide me? By giving me instructions, by directing me. Can I be honest with you? Some of you, are the reason why you have delay, marital day, financial delay, is because you are not in the right place. They, let me tell you, until you are in the right place, you cannot find the right person either in terms of partnership in terms of financial partnership in terms of support or in terms of marriage you have to be in the right place to find the right person and everybody has a place praise God Psalm 23 verse 1 are you ready to close yeah. Psalm 23 verse 1 let's read now want to go the Lord is what Psalm 23 verse 1 the Lord is what I shall know what okay he said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Is that not what it is? I know that's what you're claiming, but read the following line. The next verse is what? He maketh me to lie down in green pasture. Did you notice that? He's the one that leads me towards green pasture. Is he the one leading you towards green pasture? I want to say, 2024 is coming right now. Before you set your goal, have you prayed? You're not saying, 2024, I'll get married. Is that how you said 2023? Did he tell you get married this year? Did he tell you get married this year? You should say, Lord, in our plan, is it time to get married? It's time. I'll write it there. The reason why is that, why are you saying it's time to get married as you can marry yourself? He said, Paul planted a pool of water. It's God that gives the increase. He said, it's him that make me to lie down in green pastures. So, the shepherd is the one that is pushing me towards green pastures. When you are praying about your goal, can you take some time? When you are thinking about your goal, can you take some time to pray? He says, he leads me. Beside what? I want to ask you, are you besides still water or troubled waters? This business you want to do that your heart cannot come down. Is it still or troubled? You 
that up and down, up and down. He said, hey, my God, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. Though. Are you sure that you're not beside troubled waters? This travel, you want to travel. You've claimed that your name is not your name. You've changed your age. You've changed your name. Even your parents' name, you have changed your parents' name. Your parents ask you, when did you change your soul? You say, ah, mommy, don't worry. We're just wrong same things. We're just wrong same things. We're just wrong same things. Let me they run them. You ask that, is that a proof you want? Is this still a troubled water? Because we used to know you as Bayon, now you're Abdrazak. <laughs> Praise God. It says, it leads me. It tells you where it leads you. Beside what? Still waters. The last thing is this. Oh, wow. This person you are dating, that you'll be doing as if you are you're dating, a, you're a ninja. You just appear in his house and told me like, bang, bang, I want to check there's nobody here. <laughs> of course, you don't say that, but that's what you're doing. Then when does he open the door, you knock. Hmm, hmm, I know you are there. I know you are there. Daniel, I know you are there. I know you are there. There's someone there with you. That's why you're not opening the door. Listen, he lives beside still relationship, not trouble relationship. May God give you relationship that will give you peace. Oh. Yeah. God give you contract that will give you peace. Oh. Yeah. Every time you'll be, you be, you be here dropping to see what they will say on the phone. Hey, hey, hey. When, it's, when he or she is chatting, be you. Uh, why do you have protective screen cover on your screen? Are you the one that chatting to? He leads me beside still water. Question, are you not tired of troubled water? Come, let him lead you. This month we'll be teaching on how God can lead you beside what? Still water. Stand on your feet, let us pray. Lord, help me have a listening ear. Lord, help me, give me a seeing eye. Lord, help my coconut head not to destroy my destiny. Go ahead and pray somebody. Help comparison not to take me out of the will of God. Help me so that comparison will not take me out of the will of God. Help me not to jump out ahead of you. And Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word today. We ask that everyone here, you will give us listening ears and a seeing eye. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.